Hello, my name is Paul Wallace. I'm the Africa editor of the Banker magazine, and I'm here with John Rangombwa, who's the governor of the National Bank of Rwanda, the country's central bank. Governor Rangombwa, thank you very much for joining us. Um, since 2011, uh, inflation in Rwanda has come down quite a lot, from about 8% to, to roughly 3.5% today. Um, f firstly, what is the reason that um, inflation has come down, and also what is the central bank's outlook for, for the next year or so? Yeah, thank you. Uh, one, I think we have to look at what are the main drivers of inflation in Rwanda, uh, and that's what we, we can link or relate to the behavior uh, way back in 2011, we had pressures on international prices, uh, food prices, and uh, fuel. So the main drivers of uh, inflation in Rwanda is uh, fuel and food. Uh, and when you look at the behavior of these uh, two components of our basket, it, it has, the price has been more or less stable. Uh, but food, I'll come back to really domestic food here, I mean domestic food production of our food is, is, is key. So why it has come down, one factor is international fuel prices have stabilized and in fact came down uh, over the last uh, four years or three years. The other factor has been the increased production of food in our country and that has re-stabilized food prices. You need to note that food accounts for 35 percent of our basket, of our CPI basket. So that those have been key. But then the other factor has been the National Bank of Rwanda's monetary policy that, that has really uh, targeted uh, money in circulation that, that reduced or controlled the domestic demand uh, to avoid it going beyond really domestic supply as such. And then our collaboration with the Minister of Finance the, in terms of their fiscal policy, uh, the government is a big spender or big uh, influence of what is happening in the economy. So we relate with them their policies and how they borrow on the domestic market, how they they spend, and, and that has helped us to control inflation. So where we are today, uh, as I said, came up, up from about eight. Now we are around uh, below 4%. And our projection, or our Yes, our projection is that it won't go beyond 5% by the end of this year. So we expect that to remain around 5%. Just turning to the banking sector, um, could you just ex um, uh, discuss briefly um, how stable uh, Rwanda's banking uh, system is, um, is today? And also whether you think that the growth that banks are seeing, some banks are growing their assets at roughly 15, 20% a year, which is quite high. Whether you think um, that's sustainable, whether you think that will continue for the time being? Yeah, I, I think that's linked to, uh, to the growth of the performance of the economy in general. The, our economy has been growing at about 8% per year. Uh, and when we look at the, the state of the economy today, it's, this is a young economy with big potential. Any investment you make, the rewards are big. And what government has been doing is really to create an enabling environment to support investments. And you see this happening. And when you look at the banking sector, as you said, Janet has been growing at around 20% per year. And the potential is still very big. We have many of our citizens just joining the, the financial sector with a lot of initiatives to, to have many Rwandans joining the financial sector. A lot of initiative to have more investors coming to our country is really creating more opportunities for the banks and for the financial sector. So, yes, I see this growth to continue uh, really in the medium to long term. And in recent years, quite a few Kenyan banks have entered the country, or the likes of uh, KCB and Equity Bank, uh, and also a Crane Bank, a Ugandan bank, um, uh, got a got a license for Rwanda not that long ago. Are you seeing a lot of interest from international banks to come into Rwanda? Yes, so far we've had, uh, let me call it African banks, or maybe dominated by East African banks. We have Kenyan banks, we have Nigerian banks, uh, we have... Uh, Eco Bank, uh, so we've had mainly African banks coming in. 
as I said, this was a small economy, and with this growth we are seeing, uh, I think we see like in the next uh, maximum five years, we expect to see some of these international brands ex uh, establishing themselves in Rwanda. As it stands today, uh, Bank of Kigali, Rwanda's biggest bank, is, is the only one that's listed on the Rwandan stock exchange. Um, I, j I just wondered whether the central bank would prefer to see more lenders listed, and also, w what, in your opinion, why is it that, um, uh, that more banks haven't, haven't gone public? Yeah, uh, one, uh, when you look at the, the, the process that the banks have gone through, it, they have been really uh, attracting strategic investors because we, we need uh, the bank to be strong uh, to be able to, 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 to attract public investors to go to the public market. At least we need, uh, I really, if you are to, to, to get or to attract investors, you need to be strong with a balance sheet and with a clear uh, uh, projections for the future. So now we see most of the banks have stabilized uh, with these uh, regional investors coming in because there are some that came as uh, greenfields, but most of the investors that came into our banks were acquiring existing banks. So that we see that period sort of really going to, uh, to an end. Uh, like last year we had two banks being taken over, uh, this year we are having one of the biggest banks, BPR, increasing their, their capital. And we hope uh, maybe the next two to three years more banks will come onto the stock exchange. So it just shows maturity of the institution and it enforces uh, corporate governance. So we, we, are, we would be happy to see more banks coming into the stock exchange because in that case we, we are sure that it really push, pushes them more pressure to them to, to, to enhance their corporate governance. So. Governor, thank you very much for your time.